Welcome back to the course on design of power electronic converters. We were discussing hardware design and we had started also discussing printed circuit boards. So, last lecture I gave you an introduction to PCBs and uh, the PCB making process and the different terms, the common terms associated with PCB. Now, let us continue our discussion on PCBs. Now, as I told you, when we design a PCB, so first uh, we draw the schematic and uh, then further we do the layout of the PCB. So, let us say if this is the circuit and uh, this is the PCB, the, I mean this is the schematic of the uh, circuit that uh, we want to do the layout and uh, then this is the, the layout or the PCB that we obtain. The question is that are these two exactly same? What theoretical circuit that you are drawing on the schematic and what you are finally getting in the PCB, do they match exactly or are there any difference between the two? So, for that let us uh, uh, look into a, a very simple part of a PCB. Let us say uh, there is one trace like this which is a copper trace. Now, here what we see is that this uh, trace uh, will have a thickness which will be whatever is the thickness of the copper layer. So, let us say that is uh, the thickness is T and uh, this uh, trace uh, will also have a length. So, that is let us say is the length L and further it is got a width W. Now, so it is like a strip and obviously it will have its own resistance and also it will have some inductance. So, that means it will have parasitic resistances and parasitic inductances in a trace which is some uh, which is so uh, simple uh, in, in such a simple trace also there will be a parasitic resistance and parasitic inductance. Further, if let us say if there is uh, uh, at the bottom there is another plane which is a copper plane, it is a full filled copper layer. So, uh, let us say if uh, that is connected to 0 means that is the reference or so it is connected to ground and uh, the here uh, there is some voltage V that is applied. So, now we have a dielectric material in between because uh, we have an insulation material over here. So, that is like two plates and then there is in between uh, a dielectric material. So, that is a formation of a capacitor. So, this capacitance value of course, is going to be very small. It is a parasitic capacitance, stray capacitance, but it has some value. That means, we will have an impedance of a trace which is so simple to look for. So, what uh, we are connecting by a copper trace or uh, what which we thought in the schematic that uh, it is just a simple connection, straight connection, ideal, no R, L and C associated with it. When you place it on the PCB that means when you uh, form the layout using the copper trace, then unknowingly you are introducing some impedance in that simple connection. And it is uh, not so simple always as it looks like here. Let us say if we are forming a connection between uh, the pin of uh, this IC, let us say this pin and it is supposed to be connected uh, to this uh, point. So, uh, uh, let us say this is a wire. So, here uh, what we see is that the way the layout is performed, uh, there uh, the thickness of the, the width of the trace is uh, varying. So, here it is same as at this point, but between this and this over here and here the thickness of the copper track is different. Further in between you see that there is another track which is emerging and uh, that uh, uh, track may be going somewhere else which is not shown here. So, obviously the impedance of this part the impedance over here, the impedance of this part, this part will all be different. And further, 
this uh, wire also will have its own impedance RLC associated with the wire or the through hole whatever we are, we are using. And the impedance over here this also will be different. So, what we see is that there will be variable impedance means at different different points in the PCB depending on the placement of the traces, placement of components uh, uh, and uh, their width and thickness and the sh their shape the impedance is going to vary and so uh, the performance also will be affecting. So, what we thought as a simple schematic uh, when we uh, had simply drawn the theoretical schematic and what you are laying out and what you are getting out of it they are not exactly the same. Further to clarify the stray capacitances uh, here in this diagram what is shown is that uh, you can see that there are three traces uh, on this uh, top side and uh, uh, in between them also there will be stray capacitance and uh, uh, the reason for that is uh, let us say if there is voltage V1 here, there is voltage V2 here, these are two uh, adjacent plates and in between there is air. So, air means that that is also a dielectric medium and uh, these are uh, two uh, your metallic metal metallic plates we can say that this copper traces. So, obviously, there is a formation of a capacitance here uh, you will be having whatever is the distance d and uh, based on the length uh, l of this of these copper traces. So, when we are placing two copper traces adjacent to each other then uh, there is going to be some stray capacitance in between them. Further uh, when uh, the copper traces are on uh, different uh, layers uh, then also again will have stray capacitance there. So, all throughout the PCB there will be uh, several places where we will be having stray capacitances and as we are routing it of course, everything will have its own uh, stray inductance and stray resistance. Now, uh, let us say if, if we want to uh, do the layout of a sim very simple circuit like this where we have 2 R's and uh, 1 C and uh, uh, let us give the name of these nodes as 1, 2, 3 and uh, this uh, 3 according to theory these are the same nodes this 4, 5 and 6 uh, they are just short. Uh, I could have also just named it as 4 because uh, 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 from your knowledge of uh, basic electrical circuits you, uh, well, the way we analyze this uh, 3 are the same. Now, when we do the layout of it let us say we are going to use SMDs for uh, these uh, 3 components and uh, so these are your those SMD resistors, 2 SMD resistors here and uh, this is the SMD capacitor and these are the, the pads, the SMD pads all, all uh, these ones, the, uh, the yellow color whatever uh, it is shown are the pads and uh, these the green ones are the copper traces. So, here uh, this is the, the connection between uh, these 3 components that is formed between 2 resistors and uh, this capacitor and uh, th this is just uh, laid out because let us say if you have an input over here and if you have an output uh, at this point. So, to denote that this is this uh, copper trace which represent this line 4, 5, 6. So, let us uh, give the numbers here. So, this is point 1, 2 and uh, 3 points according to the schematic and this is point 4, 5 and 6. And now, let us ignore the parasitic associated with the components. That means, uh, I am ignoring the equivalent circuit of the resistor that means, the resistor itself will have some parasitic inductance or parasitic capacitance this capacitor equivalent circuit also we had seen uh, before uh, 
um, it will also have some parasitic resistance inductance. So, those things we are ignoring. We are just uh, looking in from the perspective of parasitic with the simple parasitics introduced by the PCB layout. So, what uh, we see here is that this pad will have its own R and L. So, that is uh, of the pad. So, these two are of the pad. Then uh, these two R and L are uh, for the pad plus uh, the trace. So, uh, this much of the trace and uh, then further again this part is uh, so he, this is point 0.2, point 0.2 and uh, this is node 1 and this is node 3 according uh, to the schematic. And so, this uh, further again this is the parasitic introduced by the pad plus the trace over here this part. And here this is uh, the parasitic introduced uh, by the pad and then for this part also for the trace plus the pad we have another parasitic over here over here and further again this is for the for the trace this part of the trace and these two are at different potentials. So, there will be capacitance uh, between them. So, that is the parasitic capacitance that is shown here and also over here uh, whatever is the parasitic capacitance that is shown here. So, let us write the node number. So, this is 4, 5 and 6. So, what uh, we observe is that, that this is what uh, we thought that uh, we wish to lay out uh, and when we realized uh, this circuit on the PCB, so this is what is we have realized. So, uh, this difference you have to note down. Now, sometimes the effect of this difference is negligible and sometimes uh, the effect uh, is not negligible, it can uh, distort the, uh, the performance of the circuit. And uh, these parasitics are what which creates lot of noise also means uh, the deviation of the signal from what it is meant to be. Obviously, these are parasitics and so they are very small in value, but uh, uh, not always those small values uh, uh, can be neglected sometimes they become important especially when the frequencies uh, become high. Now, let us see how do these impedances uh, or uh, these non-idealities how they are also responsible for creating interference. So, now uh, let us say that there are two traces uh, which are parallel to each other and there is a distance uh, d between them and there is a thickness t and there is length l and so air is the dielectric between them. So, there is a c form parasitic uh, capacitance between, between them and uh, if this is the nature of the voltage in track 1. So, this is the nature of the voltage. So, whenever this voltage is changing it is not going to change instantaneously that obviously any practical signal will have some rise time and some fall time. So, during that time there will be this uh, current associated with the stray capacitance which will be your I C D V by D T and uh, this is that current that will be flowing. So, this is the coupling that has got formed between these two traces. So, that the current will uh, then uh, disturb may disturb whatever was originally flowing in these two traces. Further, if uh, let us say there is a current flowing in it and uh, that current is alternating in nature. Uh, by alternating I do not mean that it is a sinusoidal alternating it, it is varying. So, if it is varying it will create its own magnetic field B which will also be varying and uh, that will get further coupled with uh, this trace this uh, second trace and will induce a voltage 
and that induced voltage will then uh, create its own current and so uh, then we will have uh, disturbance created in this uh, second trace. So, uh, so we see that then now there is interference created because of this parasitic capacitance and uh, this changing voltages and currents. So, there is a problem of electromagnetic interference occurring inside the PCB. Similar phenomena you can observe here also where the traces are um, on top and bottom. You can see that here also there will be some uh, C that will be formed, uh, some C stray will be there, parasitic capacitance. And if we have a voltage waveform like this in this trace, then it will have the coupled current uh, which will be flowing according to ICUDV by IDT. And similarly, voltages can also be induced if we have the uh, currents which are variable. If we have case like this uh, where the traces are just crossing, let us say one trace is on the top. So, uh, this is the one one trace uh, which is on the top layer and uh, there is another trace uh, which is on the bottom layer and uh, there is a crossing that is getting formed over here. So, this uh, crossing because of it also there will be some uh, stray capacitance uh, getting formed and then again if we have voltages like this which are going to change, so we will have uh, the capacitor currents because of it. So, uh, what we observe is that uh, different places in the PCB because of the very placement of the traces in different ways, there uh, is problem of uh, electromagnetic interference that will be getting created. Now, there is another term. Uh, which is called a signal integrity uh, which a power electronics engineer should be familiar with. We will not go into the details of uh, this uh, because these are very wide topics in themselves. Uh, we will just uh, uh, get an idea of what it is. So, uh, uh, let us uh, take the example of this where uh, we have an IC pin which is getting connected to uh, a wire. So, here what we saw that the impedances are variable. Now, let us say that uh, the signal that uh, was uh, uh, sent at this point was uh, like this uh, which is uh, what is uh, shown over here. It, it was a very nice neat and clean signal uh, that was uh, sent by this point. And uh, what you received over here when you measured using the oscilloscope is something like this, which is not exactly same as uh, the, uh, the one which was uh, sent at this point, uh, which was transmitted at this point. So, there is difference between the transmitted signal and the received signal at uh, different points. So, uh, the difference is, uh, is what you call as the noise. And uh, by now uh, you have an idea that because of all these impedances and all these interferences that are created inside the PCB, the signal is no more the same. So, the signal can have uh, a delay. So, this can be delayed, this uh, rise may be delayed from the original signal, the fall can also be delayed. Further, there can be a shift also in it and uh, all these noises uh, that we observe. This uh, uh, means that there is a problem with the signal integrity. Signal integrity means that uh, as from the very name you understand that, that uh, whatever is the signal that uh, we expected or whatever was it was transmitted we would like to receive it almost as the transmitted signal. But uh, that does not uh, happen there is noise in it. So, to what extent the noise is and uh, can uh, uh, from that if we can get uh, the original signal or if we can understand what the original signal is then we can say that the signal is good enough or the, there is signal integrity. 
So, uh, when you do the layout to the PCB, know that while doing the layout, your signal integrity of uh, whatever signals you are sending that may get affected. And in power electronics, uh, also we have to be careful about uh, because these days uh, with uh, uh, better uh, power semiconductor devices coming in like your silicon carbide and gallium nitride or wide band gap devices coming in the switching frequencies are going high. So, uh, we have to be careful about the signal integrity. Uh, so, that the PWM gate pulses that uh, you send and what you receive should be the same. The signal integrity issues are uh, more of a concern in digital circuits. So, the key points of uh, this lecture are that uh, there is difference between a circuit schematic and its PCB layout. Uh, in a schematic uh, what uh, you show as a direct connection between two points, know that when you are laying out in the PCB it is not a direct connection, there is impedance between the two points. And uh, these impedances in PCBs uh, they are variable in nature. Uh, because of the variable lengths of the traces, their weights and the wires and the holes so of so many things placed in the PCB, the impedance is not a fixed piece, is not fixed, it is variable, it is different at different different places. And in PCB, you know, there are issues of electromagnetic interference and signal integrity. So, while doing the layout of the PCB, one should be very careful about these issues. Thank you.